Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are enjoying the videos, please consider subscribing. Um, currently, the uh, snake room is in a huge mess. We have things moving around everywhere, trying to set up studio, so sorry for not seeing my face at the beginning. Um, but today I wanted to go over incubation substrates. Uh, some of you may have seen the video that Eric uh, Eric Hartle, I believe, with Reach Out Reptiles using uh, basically the substrateless method, and he mentioned perlite. Now, he, in his video, he specifically said that perlite is dirty and that it needs to be washed, it needs to be cleaned, and then you can dry it and use it. Um, so I wanted to share with you the cleaning of perlite. This is one washing and while it doesn't look too horribly bad, it has a ton of dust that has settled to the bottom. Now, after that first wash, I decided, hey, I'll wash it again and again doesn't look too bad till you stir it up and it's much better than that but it definitely needed a second wash now by the third wash yes you have some still have some dust but the dust is significantly reduced and with this um, I would say at this point you're getting to diminishing returns now with each of these, perlite was poured in, it was pushed down to submerge, to rinse it, and then removed into the next bucket. It was not handled vigorously because they are rocks basically rolling against itself. It may be something else, but eventually at some point you're going to hit diminishing returns and you're going to produce more dust than you are rem removing by making the perlite rub against itself. Now, at this point, I would say this is clean. You can dry it, you can do whatever, but, you know, quit messing with it, basically. At this point, there's still a lot of garbage in this, and some of this garbage is actually, like, black flecks of something that I don't know what it is that are in the perlite itself, and they're floating all throughout it. But obviously those things also need to be rinsed off as best as possible. But from here, once the, again, once the perlite is clean, we just have a tub of perlite. Now for me, my perlite, I like it to be nice and thick. I'm also going to do this in vermiculite because I actually like vermiculite. Um, he stated that vermiculite was like a sponge. I want to test that theory but we'll do that later. I always like to have a very thick layer of substrate and that way I can, if I feel I need to, add water till I see it just at the bottom edge of the tub and I know that I have a lot of room above that water that it will not get to the eggs because as stated in that video, the only thing the eggs need is airflow and 100% humidity and a constant temperature. As long as you have those things and you leave them alone, they'll hatch. All right, so let's go move on to our vermiculite test and we'll see how it turns out. We are back and ready to test the vermiculite. Now, as you can see here, uh, I have roughly the same amount of perlite as vermiculite. Just in case anyone wonders, this is the vermiculite I get is just from Lowe's, nothing special. Perlite, it's the same from Lowe's, nothing special. Now, this is roughly the same amount of vermiculite and perlite, but we're going to test this. We're going to see number one is this a sponge that will um, pull, you know, absorb moisture because advertising was they're both considered to be drainage and aeration um, 
matter or particulate for salts. And also, we uh, number one, we just want to see if it's a sponge, but number two is perlite versus, versus vermiculite. Is there any real difference outside of, you know, texture, which is one of the reasons why I like vermiculite versus perlite. And, you know, is it a sponge? Now, um, most people that have tested both of these have found that they perform very similarly. I personally like vermiculite, um, especially the fine vermiculite. I feel like it holds the eggs more securely. Um, also, much like the perlite, when I add water, it just sinks to the bottom. But what we're going to do is we're going to, I have four, roughly four quarts of water here. We're going to add this vermiculite to the water. We're going to soak it. And we're going to see, number one, it's going to be horribly dirty. But number two, we're going to see if it is a sponge. All right, let's do that real quick and then we'll go from there. And the number one thing that I see that's different from perlite, or is it? Nope, they both float. But it looks like the vermiculite is much dirtier. I'm gonna give this a minute, and then I'm going to pull this back into, I'm not gonna use this bucket because this bucket's dirty. I'm gonna wash that. I'm going to use the rinse buckets previously that I used. Let's see how much water we actually lose. If it's a significant amount, oh, looks like it might be. It does look like it's absorbed quite a bit of water, but it's also draining quite a bit of water too. I didn't check with the perlite to see if there was a similar reaction, unfortunately, so I can't compare. Yeah, I'd definitely say it's absorbed a bunch of water, but it's not, not necessarily excessive. And at the bottom of this, it looks like I can pour quite a bit of this water back. This is the exact same thing that I did with the perlite. And I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'm gonna pour any large amounts of water that drain back in the bucket, and then I'm gonna wash it a couple more times and we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm back. Now, I have learned two things from this. Number one, vermiculite acts like a non-Newtonian fluid. When there's enough water, it just flows. But once it dries out, it gets all crumbly. Now, it definitely does absorb a ton of water. It does not drain anywhere near as well as perlite does, which is the entire purpose behind these. You remember they're, they are for horticultural, horticultural purposes, you know, with gardening and soil drainage for things that don't drain well, so that way your plants will do better and perlite works better than vermiculite. On top of that, vermiculite does absorb a pretty substantial amount of water, um, but that being said, it does drain. So any water that is in here, given a little bit of time, will drain to the bottom and the top will be dry, or at least it will be damp, not wet. Um, I thought that perlite was ridiculously dirty, but vermiculite is obviously dirtier. Probably with a, with a light test to see what, how much light passes through, but it is dark versus light as well, which will cause it to absorb more light and seem like it's dirtier without a proper weight. It's almost impossible, and I'm not going to get that scientific. Um, that being said, texture-wise, 
like personally texture wise having it on my hands I prefer ver vermiculite I've always had good luck with ver vermiculite I haven't had bad luck with perlite again it's just strictly a texture thing um, picking these up now perlite's been washed vermiculite's been washed vermiculite leaves a much bigger mess on my fingers than perlite does though you can get bigger um, grain vermiculite but what have I learned from this number one vermiculite holds a lot of water uh, number two I still like the feel of vermiculite versus perlite when I'm mixing it up uh, blame me for being weird um, but number three they're still kind of equal I mean you rinse these off you get them all the dust off of them they serve their purpose they hold the eggs prevent them from rolling around you bury them a little bit the top stays mostly dry if not damp the bottom is where the water is held and you have humidity surrounding your eggs completely now is there any pro or con to either one not really it's personal preference it's whatever you can get your hands on uh, i thought that there might be a more definitive this versus this um if you are prone to adding a lot of water to your eggs i would say go with perlite because you're going to have less likelihood of adding too much because you can see on the side of, of the container much easier how much water you have versus with vermiculite all right everyone i'm going to go put both of these bins after drilling a few holes in them into the incubator to get them up to temp the incubator is currently uh, germinating some seeds for my wife and it, of course i have my test for the um for the substrateless uh, incubation tray and we're going to get these in there as well um it's all about humidity and the the incubators at 100 percent humidity currently all right everyone have a great day bye thanks for watching the video if you like what we've done please remember to subscribe and also consider checking out either the playlist or the video that is shown on the screen have a great day bye